Hey guys, this is uh, day 17 of the vocabulary challenge, and today I'm going to show you some really cool modern lines from Loggy Line, and this is from the same video that I used for day one with Melissa Aldana. Um, so it's a blues and F, and I want to show you mainly just one course that I transcribed and maybe like a small part of like another one. Um, but the main course, let me play it for you first. I'm starting this uh, a couple seconds before the course, and it comes in on like the pickup. So, I'll let you know. Right now. Okay. So, they said it starts to measure before the top of the chorus, and he's starting on the end of one. So, I'll go really slow. Hopefully, I get this main gist of it correct. So... Coming from like the turnaround. maybe but we're gonna go through it and we'll talk about it okay so like I said he's starting to measure before but he's basically just leading into the tonic F7 so one of the things that are interesting I guess in, to me in this little chorus is just his arpeggio choices that he uses over certain chords um, they're not they're pretty logical a lot of them but I don't know they just they work really well so He's using a lot of, like for the dominant, a lot of arpeggios that are diatonically related up a third and down a third. So for like F7, obviously a chord that relates that would be like A half diminished, as well as D minor, or like D7, like if F is the 5 chord, D would be the 3 minor. And again, if F is the 5 chord, the A half diminished is like the 7 diminished, so that's where those chords come from. So the first line he's coming in on the pickup is basically... And he's just playing basically the uh, A half diminished arpeggio starting on the 7. Right? And then from there, because that's like the top, it's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 then. So then just the top. And he's doing this. Um, into this. So all of that is basically C minor. And that's basically, again, if you're thinking F7, C minor is like the companion minor, like the two chord. Um, that's how I'm seeing that line. So again, from the top, one. So then when he gets there, basically what it is, is this whole part. Um, basically, I see that as mainly two harmonies. Really either like an E half diminished or B7. And they're kind of like the same thing again, in the same fashion as with the F7. If B, B is your dominant 7 chord, E or D sharp half diminished is like the chord that diatonic relates to. Um, so basically, he's going into that, and basically the way that this chord or this harmony works is it's basically a half step above what it's approaching, which is B flat 7, or D half diminished, which again are like related chords. So it's basically doing that like half step approach, and he's inserting this harmony in. To create some tension, lead into it. Um, so that whole part is basically again. I see this part as uh, D sharp half diminished, but then this that's more like B seven to me. But again, they're kind of the same thing. Okay, then he gets to the B flat seven, the four chord. He does this. So, he starts with this F, ma uh, F sharp major triad, and again, first of all, I was going to make this point about the other chords too, like, it's like, you can see how all these arpeggio substitutions, like, they diatonically relate in a way, or work over what the original chord is, but it's like, thinking about it in its own way lends itself to a whole, like, different slew in your mind of ideas, because I feel like you, as a personal, like, or unique musician always have your own associations with different chords so it's like 
if you think like E half diminished instead of, or E flat half diminished instead of B7, I feel like just thinking about it as a different chord will make you give different lines that come out in a moment. So, because to me, I see those chords as almost like the same thing. So it's like, is it really different? I mean, in a way it is, but it's like, it just lends itself to new ideas. So anyway, back to the fourth chord. He has the F sharp major, and if you look at those notes over B flat seven, you got the sharp five, the tonic, the sharp nine. So it's like an altered sound. And again, like I've said this in videos before, it's not always about what notes you're playing, but what notes you're leaving out. And that's just a few notes that happen to be part of like a B flat altered sound. But they're also not playing all of them, so it's like a triad is a nice, complete, like, strong, melodic group of notes, okay? But it doesn't sound it long. Then it goes into that, which is more like a G minor triad, and again, that diatonically relates to B flat 7, like I said before, it's just diatonically down a third. If B flat 7 is the 5 chord, G minor is the 3 minor. So, and then from there, the next measure... which is the one chord again, but that line, sorry, it's, to me, I kind of hear that as like a diminished sound. So then when they're back to the one chord, okay, and this is basically an outline of like a F major triad, which is a tonic triad, and then kind of turning it into like the relative minor, like a D minor, so again, just using the arpeggio that's down a third. And he's also using kind of like a ghosting technique, similar to what I talked about last night. Um, just the, rhythmically, the fact that you play both those notes, uh, like one after the other, the same note, it just creates a really cool effect. Um, you know, and basically, um, basically you're thinking like D7, it's like the chord before the turnaround, or before the 2-5-1, so. And then 2-5-1, which again, you're thinking G minor, C7 to F, he does this thing, which is, just really intervallic. You can interpret it like different ways, basically. The ending part is just sort of like the resolution, like the C7, leading into F to the tonic. But the part before that, um, again, I don't honestly, like, I, you know, if you watch my videos, I always try to put a label to everything, because that's what helps me understand things. Like, I get so analytical about the harmony sometimes, but I like it. But, um, Sometimes like this, I mean, this note released in relationship to G or the two chord would be like a major third. So it's almost like a G7 going to a C7. So you have the major third, the nine, the fifth, and the root. Um, you know, it's just like an intervallic collection of notes. It just sounds good. Like I always say, your ear is your best tool. And then they land on the tonic, so they go up that arpeggio again. Basically, if you think of F like Ionian, like the one, you have a, a A minor seven arpeggio that relates to it. it's like the three minor. And then um, he does this. Um, so he's going up and down with these like chromatic stuff. If you were to analyze all the notes intervallically, just over F seven. It creates some altered tensions, but it's just chromaticism. It's got interesting voice leading, and he's using these pulse step intervals that just it almost sounds very like monkish to me. Um, but it just has a real nice effect to it. It has a real modern sound. Sorry. And then he kind of continues that idea into the next chorus. Um, so I'd say that the main thing, even again, like. Everything is pretty intelligent when you really break it down. Um, a lot of the arpeggios he's using, I mean, I always talk about things, it's just really getting familiar with the arpeggios that are not only a diatonic 
third up, but a diatonic third down as being good choices and lending itself to different sounds in your solo. Um, I'll try to actually play it with him once. I might mess it up, but I'll give it a shot. But let's see how it goes. You know, a little sloppy, but it's cool. You know, there's definitely some real awesome minor stuff to take from that. And then really quickly, just actually this is a chorus that happens earlier in his solo. Just how he opens this up, I just like this idea. So right now. Right? And again, it's basically like a, you know how the first four measures of the blues go. But if you analyze that, just generally speak, like harmonically. Uh, he's just kind of going down in whole steps with like minor triads, like kind of going from like D minor to C minor to B flat minor. And just seeing how they can relate, like if you start with D minor, again, D minor is just the arpeggio that is down, like I've been saying, a, a diatonic third from F7. So again, he's using these to kind of create different ideas. But then C minor is, in a way, is also related to um, to F7, because it's like the two of the five. And so it's like almost like the three minor, the two minor, but then he goes to um, B flat minor, which, I mean, that's kind of, sort of changing up the sound of it a little bit, but the fact that you have things moving sequentially and whole steps down has a real unique sound to it. So that's something that you can kind of use, even if you were kind of to make your own lines, just thinking like starting a diatonic third down from the root of the tonic chord, so D minor, um, and then moving that down in whole steps, and then resolving it to the four chord, because he does that somehow, where it's like... stuff for you right there so i hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you tomorrow